Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Make sure the microphone's on. <laughs> Today, uh, welcome to Stocks for Breakfast. And I, uh, first off, I want to say thank you for joining the community. Thank you so much for watching the channel. It means a lot to me that you trust me to help navigate you through what's now become a little bit more challenging uh, market environment than it was uh, even just two or three weeks ago. Uh, if you find these videos helpful, uh, if you could please do me a favor, click down and subscribe. That would mean the world to me. Uh, and also, if you have any um, feedback or especially questions about something that we review or discuss or a new topic like we're going to talk about today, uh, definitely leave some feedback in the um, below the video. Uh, I might not get back to you immediately the same day, uh, but I, I promise I will get back to you. Uh, we did get one request um, for uh, a list of the top trading books that I would recommend. Um, absolutely a good, a good topic. I'm not sure why I haven't done that one yet. Uh, I will do that one this weekend. Today's actually Thursday. We'll cover that one on uh, Saturday. Uh, so let's, uh, let's grab our coffee. Uh, let's get ready. And um, today we're going to talk about something that we, we get a ton of feedback um, in the, in the bootcamp from a lot of new traders, which is something that is, uh, I keep saying um today, I don't know why, uh, they are confused about what good trades look like. And on one hand, that's great that I, that I have immediate feedback of what I need to help with. On the other hand, is that opening a trading account and not being able to identify whether or not you should put your money in harm's way, um, that's definitely a concern. <laughs> Um, so we're going to take care of that today. I promise you by the time you watch this video, probably end up being about seven or eight minutes, it will be the best investment that you make today. Because what we're going to do, and, and if you're a regular viewer of the channel, uh, you know that I'm really big on tape reading. And tape reading, if, if you don't know the term where tape reading comes from, it's from way back in the early 1900s of the stock market, let's say 1920s, 30s in that area, uh, where Thomas Edison actually invented the ticker tape. So I'm sure you've seen a ticker tape parade. So back in the day when people would read the ticker tape to see how a stock was doing in their office. So tape reading became, that's what the skill was. You were reading the tape to determine the next movement in the stock. So there's chart reading. Then there's the lost art of tape reading, which is what I teach. And then there's actually becoming a trader. So chart reading means you understand what you're looking at on the charts. Tape reading means that you're building an argument for a great trade. And we're going to talk about that today. And I think you're going to be pretty excited when we, get, when we flip over to the charts here. Uh, and then trading is when you master what happens between the entry and the exit price. Because you can spot what's going on. You can build a great argument. But then you still have to make money on the trade. And even if the trade doesn't make money, you still have to learn how to manage that position if it doesn't work out, which is a huge part of trading. Which, by the way, I'm, 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 uh, I'm very grateful that I am starting to see some really nice comments about uh, the lessons and the trading ideas that we're, we're um, giving, we're, that we're giving out every day uh, are helping people also not lose money. That's a big deal. It's a really big deal because there, there's market environments where it's super obvious and not hard to make money. And then there's market environments like, kind of like we're in right now where it's not super obvious. Uh, and it's easy to throw money away. Uh, and, and so there, there's understanding when not to be involved. There's understanding when to scale back. Um, and then there's understanding when you, ha like I talked about yesterday, you have open road and uh, you just fly and everything is easy, which we had a few weeks ago and basically off the March lows, right? So today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discuss a part of tape reading um, that is very unique. Uh, and I, and uh, the way I, I talk about it, is I talk about is there you have the whole song versus the notes. And I'm not, mus I'm not musical at all. I, I might even be tone deaf. I have no idea. I do love to sing though. Um, is when you get into, you, you know, more often than not, when you're using moving averages or you're looking at a chart, you're kind of looking at the whole song. You're looking at the big picture of what that stock is doing. You could say just keeping things at a very high level. It's above the 20 period moving average. It's above the 50. It's above the 200 and you make a decision or you make an observation based on that. So you're kind of reading the song, you're reading the whole thing. What we're gonna talk about today is taking a little bit deeper and actually reading the notes within that song. So we're actually gonna see, how can you tell just by looking at moving averages, no indicators, nothing, just the individual candlesticks from day to day, week to week, and the type of candlestick in an instant having an idea of all of the stuff that you were missing by not paying attention to this 
and probably making some bad ideas, uh, excuse me, making some bad trades because now you'll be able to look back and say, what was I doing? It was, a, it was an absolute mess. And here's how you identify that um, really clearly to yourself. Uh, which, by the way, this is always easy to spot after the fact, right? You, <laughs> you see it at 9 o'clock at night instead of, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning when it's unfolding, right? Um, you need a structure. You need a structure for identifying what perfect looks like. If you don't know what perfect looks like, and you know I'm a, I'm a huge, a huge part of my, my strategy, a huge part of my edge, a huge part of order flow, which is everything that we talk about in the, in the boot camp and specifically in the tape reading room, is you need to know if this is perfect, you can you feel confident, you have conviction in those ideas. But when you start to go from perfect and you're moving away from perfect, your conviction level has to go down, your share size has to change if you even put the trade on in the first place. Now there's definitely some trades that are not starting out as perfect, but they have perfect conditions that maybe you can start building a position and if it starts moving in your favor, uh, you have a really, really good entry in the context of a good decision and in, in, um, in good order flow is really the right term. So we're going we're gonna to look at a few different things. So remember, the whole point of this video is you need to understand what perfect looks like and you should be able to tell immediately. And then you'll be able to say, what am I doing? This is, this is in the middle of nowhere. Or why did I put the trade on? Or why did I even think about buying it? It was far from perfect. And the opposite of that, which I talk about often as well, which is really the biggest problem. And I, I promise you this, if you sign up, if you, if you join the bootcamp, I promise you this, once you get indoctrinated to really understanding what order flow is, really understand the difference between chart reading and tape reading, and you start to build that argument, in a very short period of time, your biggest problem is going to be holding your winning trades longer. And then that's the next thing we need to work on together, uh, which is a really good problem to have, right? So we're gonna go over to the charts. We're gonna start out with the market, and then we're gonna go into a couple of different stocks so you can see the dramatic difference uh, also so that you can now, like that, look at a stock and be like, all right, maybe I could consider that, or what am I doing? That, that, that's such a mess, well, I'm not putting my money in harm's way. So I'm not exaggerating how simple it's gonna be, but you're gonna be shocked at how many trades you were actually in that were so low probability you, you, you should be, you'll be disappointed. Your future self will be disappointed in your past self for not knowing better, but now you're gonna be excited to know it. So let's hop over to the charts um, and uh, we will, we're gonna start out with the SPY, the, uh, the SPY ETF, that's where I spend most of my day. So we're gonna start out, obviously, this is a little bit bigger picture scenario here. So we know we had to bounce off the lows in, uh, in March and we had kind of this capitulation high here, which, which we, if you remember, if you're um, watching the Stocks and Breakfast videos, I said that we kind of going to get a hangover after that. We had this massive spike to the upside. I literally said in the videos that we are probably going to have some kind of sell the news reaction where it's all good news. And then the Fed came out, announced on, I believe it was on June 10th, and we've kind of been stuck in this wider range. So in the room, in, in, uh, in the community, I've been talking about this is a very wide trading range in the SPY right now. And right now, that's the right price. We broke the trend line here from March. We broke the trend line here. And that was the previous high for breaking the trend line. So this is the right way to analyze how a stock is trading and what the right price is. As long as it's trending up, you have every right in the world to be still looking to be a buyer on that stock. And this is, this is the order flow. The order flow is orders from large institutions and, and us, quite frankly, the collective consciousness of the market, which uh, Benjamin Graham called Mr. Market. It's the right money, the smart money, because they're pushing the market. Right now it's in a wide window. So basically this is where we broke it. This is where we went to. Until we break one of these numbers, that's the right price. So we're in a less than perfect scenario right now because we're stuck between a change of trend and new highs. So you need to really just Keep it that simple. And you notice there's no moving averages on the chart. I'm really just looking at what is the right price. So now this is going to be the exciting part. So if we look in between this box, now we're going to start to look at the individual candlesticks and how price is reacting within this box. Is it opening at a certain spot and closing higher with consistency, which would indicate institutional activity all day in that stock? Or are we seeing a lot of melted candles where there's indecision? And are we seeing from one day to the next where it's closing on the highs and creating higher highs and higher lows, thereby creating 
a better situation to read the tape to expect your stock to continue in that direction. I know that's a mouthful, but really what it means is, are we seeing green candles closing on the highs? Are we seeing melted candles? So look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days of indecision. Obviously, remember we said A plus trades and you move away from A plus trades. Or are we seeing what we want to see? Now these, again, this isn't perfect either because we want to see large green candlesticks, but for if we want to be a buyer, but we're still seeing what I call well bid, which is higher highs, higher lows, and closing on the highs. Okay, a little bit of a pause, but then a giant gap, and then well bid again, followed by a melted candle. Now here's the FOMC announcement, and here's the day after, right? Look at the kind of candles we're having now compared to this move to the upside. Closing on the lows, large, large, what I call an energy candlestick, so that's a bearish energy candlestick. It goes below the low. Interestingly, we actually bounced, had a gap, but that gap, what, what, would we, what would we have wanted to see and or needed to see here to feel a little bit more conviction? Well, this candlestick would have needed to close above the open, which means we needed to see it green. It wasn't green. Then we had red. Then we had indecision. Then we had red. Then we had an inside candlestick. Then we had red and we had more red. So just reading the notes here, you can immediately tell this is less than optimal conditions for you to be accepting more risk because the profit potential is less obvious. So it's less obvious, which means the risk is not justified because the profit potential is not as clear as it was over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're gonna to go to uh, a stock. Um, let's take a look at, let's take a look at Lulu as an individual stock. So you saw the market and the market was channeling a little bit, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull out this Lulu trend which went kind of hyperbolic. So you can see here that it's, it did not have good earnings. So let, let's put that into consider. I think it was over here, if I'm not mistaken. So you can see now since the earnings and since the FOMC announcement, it's been mostly closing below the open, right? So again, less than perfect scenario. So if you've been day trading Lulu or trying to swing trade it, you could now look at the stock and say, what do I want to see that tells me I'm getting closer to a perfect trade and we're not seeing this, right? This is really good. This is perfect. These two are perfect. We want to see more of that to have conviction. So these two perfect ones led to a bullish gap. Then we went, we went, we paused a little bit after this move to the upside. Then we had one, two, three, four well bid candlesticks in a row. And again, we're continuing to see the price action that we want. We're not seeing this where it becomes indecision. So this indecision, which is small body candlesticks at all time highs, has now put the stock into what we, you know, what we would normally call a trading range. Well, you can clearly see here, this is perfect conditions. And if we go out, if you want to hold your trades a little longer, such as swing trades, look at how different that looks on the weekly chart to hold your good trades. One, two, three, four, five weeks of buying of perfect conditions, or pretty close to perfect. This one isn't perfect, but pretty darn close, right? So now we're going to have a, a stark comparison where you can see, okay, Longer term bullish order flow, pretty good daily candlesticks, really good looking on the weekly, right? So you can, you can understand how you would have been uh, making good decisions looking at that order flow and then reading the notes within the, within the charts to say what's perfect. In this case, if you want to be a buyer, you want to see large consecutive green candlesticks closing on the highs. You don't want to see indecision. Now, here's one that's going to be pretty stark. Look at what we're seeing here. There's no consistency to order flow to the upside. So immediately out of the equation, just like that, you should be able to start reading the tape and say, how long have buyers or sellers been in charge of this stock? How much real money was committed to this idea of a bullish move to the upside? Well, quite frankly, there was only two days. So how much conviction can you have in an idea? The amount of people that were looking for this to go to the moon after it went up 100% was, I'm going to use a strong word here, Ridiculous. Now you should be able to look at it immediately and say, how much money was committed to this before I commit my money? Hardly any. Two days. Now, here's where it gets really super interesting. Look at what happens after this. There were, there were a lot of people considering getting buying this because they missed it. They missed it. They missed it, right? Well, we just explained to you in the Lulu chart, and especially on the Lulu weekly chart, what it needs to look like to be perfect. Well, look at what's going on after this. It's a mess. Melted candlestick, melted candlestick, melted candlestick, melted candlestick. Certainly not.
perfect green candlesticks, right? No, what we call energy candlesticks, melted candlesticks. All right, maybe, right? Well, we have a big green, we have a well bid candlesticks, but it closes on the lows. Not perfect. Indecision, indecision, red, indecision, 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 uh, red, and trending lower. So hopefully at this point, what we just explained will help you, number one, avoid low probability situations where you can look at the daily chart and combine that with the weekly chart without using any indicators at all and be able to say, well, I understand what perfect looks like. I want to understand how to be a tape reader. I want to understand how to put the pieces together. At the very least, if you don't understand what it looks like, if it doesn't look perfect, if it doesn't even look really good, where you see melted candlesticks, or if you want to be a buyer, you're seeing that it's well offered, which is closing on the lows and lower lows and lower highs, right? You know to keep your money out of the market or not look to initiate a new trade in that stock. Now there's different scenarios where well offered is an opportunity, which is when a stock is trading higher and then pulls back for a couple of days and closes on the lows, uh, which we're going to talk about in today's best stock picks. I actually have a really good idea that I'm going to share with everybody today. Um, but at the very least, you should be able to look and say, it's a bunch of indecision candles. What am I doing? I'm just going to guess that the stock is going to move in my direction. I don't want to guess. I want to put my money out there when I think that the probability of profit is super high. Now you have the very foundation of understanding how to look at a chart like that and have a pretty good idea if smart money is doing something and if you want to get on board. This is, again, this is only a small piece of what it means to be a tape reader. The next part is actually learning how to manage those trades, getting in at the right time, understanding how to hold them long enough. Um, so if you want to learn a little bit more about that, definitely click down and learn about the boot camp. It, it, would really, um, it, it would really be awesome to have you in the community. If you, if you really have a burning desire to succeed and you want to get in there, uh, I, I'd recommend it. And I actually got a question yesterday about whether the boot camp is only for day traders. The answer is no. You just saw, I looked at all of these charts. I didn't go to the day trading charts at once. All of the good ideas come from the daily chart, the weekly chart, and the monthly charts. And then if you choose to be a day trader, you can actively trade those stocks in and out. So hopefully you found some value in this video. If you did, absolutely, please click down and subscribe uh, to the channel. That would mean everything to me. I'd appreciate it. Uh, if you have any feedback or questions about what we just covered, you can leave a comment too, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a great day, and please be safe out there. Take care.